I've got some fast good news for you right now. Greater is he who is in you, Christ in you, than he, the enemy that's in the world. That's good news, and I think that's the perfect news to launch into prayer as we start this new series. Precious Father, we need your help. As always, Lord, we depend on your precious Holy Spirit to breathe on the Word of God into our life, enlightening our eyes so that we might see the hope of the calling of the glory that you have for each one of us. In Jesus' precious name, say, I receive it. Amen. We've got it. Breaking Enemy Lines, part one. This is going to be an exciting series, and I believe this is an on-time word for you and I right now. This series is about spiritual warfare and lines, boundaries. Spiritual what? Warfare? Most people skip over the word boundaries. Forget that. Words, boundaries. Let's talk enemies and war. I consciously refuse to give the enemy publicity. I won't do it. Too many are inclined to magnify their problems and devils instead of talking about God, His power, His goodness, His answers. C.S. Lewis, the famous author of such classics as the Chronicles of Narnia, said this, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. I totally agree with Mr. Lewis. The truth is, Jesus said our number one priority is to seek first the kingdom of God. Isn't that so? Remember this, God's goodness is opposite to, but also far more superior in superpower to the enemy's evil. Jesus cast out legions of devils with a word. Devils begged Jesus not to banish them to the abyss. In Luke 11, verse 20, Jesus told his critics that he tossed demons around with the finger of God. Yes, this series is about spiritual warfare, but it's even more about the borders of God's blessing for your life. You have to know them, understand them, to benefit from them. So buckle up, this is for you. Here's what this series is gonna do for you and me with God's help. Number one, it's gonna expose. Number two, it's gonna reveal. And number three, it's gonna advance. Number one, expose the enemy's strategies marshaled against you. They're real, they're real, my friend. And the enemy hates light. Number two, they're gonna reveal the territory that God says is yours. This is critical. Faith gives you a title deed. That's what the book of Hebrews 11 says. Now, number three, you're going to advance your life through this series line upon line. Advance your life line upon line. Advancement comes with breakthrough, and that's for you. So expose, reveal, and advance. Did you know that God has property lines for you? That's right. Lines that legalize territory, blessings, and benefits for you and your family. You must be aware of these lines, though. Otherwise, how can you possess something that you're ignorant of? Or even worse, you could be deceived into rejecting, disrespecting, and throwing your blessings away. Look at this, Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6. The Lord is my chosen and assigned portion, my cup. You hold and maintain my lot. Think of that word, lot. Verse 6, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good heritage. That's for you, my friend. That's for you. A portion or a lot is an assigned measurement of property of valuable holdings. The invisible marker lines of God's records say you're the owner of pleasant places. Remember this, the record of legal spiritual boundaries is what entitles you to God's great gift and heritage, his inheritance for your life. If you don't recognize the lines of inheritance in life, you never possess the pleasant places. Everything in life moves from the invisible to the visible, from unseen realm to the seen realm. What you refuse to possess in the spirit is consequential to the natural. Yes, God has good lines, boundaries for you, but your enemy strategically uses counterfeit lines to steal from you. 
battle lines to war against you. Breaking enemy lines is crucial for all of us right now in this day. You're about to learn how to shut down, close out, eradicate the enemy's lines, and therefore any of his access to your home, your life, and your family. Now that's a good thing. Admiral Horatio Nelson, is regarded as the greatest officer in the history of the Royal Navy. He commanded the British fleet during the famous wars of the 18th century. Under his great leadership, a tactic was perfected called breaking the enemy line to destroy the enemy's cohesion and overwhelm them. Breaking enemy lines was a strategy for victory. Over time, technology advances. In World War II, Allied paratroopers were dropped behind enemy lines for the same goal, to break enemy lines. Whether it's front line, enemy line, border, boundary, trench, you need to know all about it and then act on it accordingly. That's called strategy. So consider for a moment a laser and the lines of light that it creates. Admiral Nelson's definition of breaking enemy lines has modernized. To better understand the principle of battle lines, think of how invisible laser beams, lines of light, are used for security to guard against thieves and intruders. Think Mission Impossible or James Bond. Yes, these high-tech security fields, they are real, they exist. There's something called laser grids, which are lines of invisible light protecting an area from intrusion. We've seen those in movies. Now consider this. The enemy likes to mimic lines of light to forbid you from access to your blessings and the needed answers that you want in your life. But you own these boundaries from God. Jesus is the light. He has no rivals. His light has no shadows, no equal, no comparison. Satan is a border counterfeiter. Oh, come on, Stephen. Does God really care about our invisible lines and our invisible boundaries? Well, that's a good question. Deuteronomy 19.14 says, don't mess with your neighbor's landmark or a curse comes on you. Did you know in Hosea 5 verse 10, God compares those who move boundaries to very evil leaders. Job labeled people who dare manipulate the boundary lines in Job 24 verse 2 as violent, wicked individuals ripe for God's punishment. Ah, so do the grids outlining God's assigned authority matter? You better believe it, my friend. Not only must you believe it, but you better know it. If the boundaries of a money market account are favorable to you, they're good for you, you better know it or ignorance will make you a sitting duck for any scam. Like they say, get your head in the game because this game is for life. The devil, he's an intruder, an invader, a parasite, laying his larva eggs in your thinking, hijacking your mind. I don't like spending time talking about the enemy's tactics, but God's word tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's strategies. We all need to be able to address the skunk in the flower bed, right? 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. To keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. We're not ignorant of his schemes. Now, let me point out an imbalance and a danger. Don't blame the devil for circumstances that have more to do with neglecting God's wisdom than spiritual adversity. Ignorance of truth is deadly. That vacuum invites evil. Faith in a lie is deadly. And Bible ignorance is just far too common. Benjamin Franklin, you know, the old inventor, the founding father, he once said this, the only thing more expensive than education is ignorance. So what if you don't know what God has given to you? What, what's the big deal? What if you're not aware of the lines of the authority? What if you believe the enemy? His lines are false, but if believed, they can bring death. You have an enemy an enemy of the demon class who wants to steal your ground, who wants to destroy your ground, your life. Wars are fought over control of people and territory. Let's face it, and control is measured with lines and borders, right? Joseph Stalin, the brutal leader of the Soviet Union in World War II, he once asked 
Winston Churchill this question. He said, God is on your side? Is he a conservative? The devil's on my side. He's a good communist. Stalin's devil ideology was the root of him murdering tens upon tens of millions of people. He fell headlong into the religion of Marxism, forcing a demonic socialism on his fellow man. The real battle is born in the spirit realm. Seen reality is the outcome of what's unseen. A spiritual enemy is seeking to devour you. Ephesians 6, 12 says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, rulers of darkness, forces of wickedness in the heavenly realm. That's New Testament. So why is this force of wickedness determined to hijack your jurisdiction, your property lines? Well, let's talk about it. Lucifer was an anointed cherub, basically in the class of angels. He was beautiful and arrayed by God to reflect the Creator's glory. Lucifer walked the Garden of Eden and had full access to God until one day. Pride was found in him. Ezekiel 28 verse 16 says, You were filled with lawlessness and violence. He was thrown out of heaven so fast that he lost his identity and position. His name Lucifer meant day star or son of the morning. Now his name is Satan which means adversary. He's also called Beelzebub, which means Lord of the flies. He imitates angels. Second Corinthians 11 warns us that he often appears as an angel of light. He's the deceiver, his demons deceive. Lucifer's job was to worship God and serve people. He wanted to be God and have people serve him. God judged him. So Jesus came born of a virgin and defeated the devil on the cross, restoring God's order by putting the devil under our feet, under your feet. The devil hates you. He's evil. You're made in God's image. He hates God, so he hates you. But be encouraged, my friend. Satan's fate is sealed and you have the victory in Christ Jesus. Just take your stand though. You have to take your stand with a humble heart and work God's truth. Look at James 4, verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Pride took Satan down. Humility and truth keep him underfoot. Sure, you have an enemy, but you're empowered to break enemy lines all day, any day. So don't be afraid. Be strong in the Lord. Jesus said the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. That sounds pretty much like an invading army operating under the orders to terminate with extreme prejudice. The devil is real, but he's a defeated foe. Jesus did that for us. Before the 19th century, the number one cause of death in the developed world was infection caused by bacteria. In ancient Egypt, they used to apply moldy bread to infected wounds but large-scale use of antibiotics came with the discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming in 1928. Bacteria was basically defeated in early 1900s. So why do we need to deal with it today? Well, as you know, medicine must be applied to uphold the victory over the sickness. Jesus shed his blood, defeating the devil forever, but we still must use his medicine to uphold and apply the victory. Lady Gaga one time said this, sometimes in life, you don't always feel like a winner, but that doesn't mean you're not a winner. Lady, I agree. Don't rely on feelings. Trust in Jesus, who is the ultimate winner. We're winners in him. Let's investigate what an enemy line might look like or even sound like in your life. Think about this. Often the enemy hijacks a life by injecting his custom thinking. Small fly eggs of larvae grow into deadly parasites feeding off of your mind, infesting your thoughts. Ooh, that's an ugly picture. One day I asked a medical doctor friend of mine about artificial sweeteners. He explained that some of these chemical compounds were not only sweet to the taste, but addictive. 
They stimulate the frontal lobe, he said, of the brain by harming and even killing cells, brain cells. That's kind of how the enemy works. He injects lies into our thoughts, energized to work their kill agenda. So what would these look like or sound like projected from the enemy lines into our thoughts, into your thoughts? Here's just a few old standbys demonic forces like to use right now in this day. You're not good enough, so why would God ever help you? Here's another one. God knows what you did and who you really are, so why bother? It's hopeless. Your family was right. You're worthless. You're trouble. This is all coming from the enemy. That's a famous enemy line. Here's another one. Love is for those who deserve it. And let's face it, that's not you, is it? Notice how he uses questions. Notice that? If God wanted you to be successful, then why are you such a failure? Another horrific question. This habit, this addiction, this rage, this anger, it's just who you are. So shut up and live with it. Another demonic seed. You were abused and taken advantage of because you deserved it. Isn't that the truth? Oh, what a lie. You'll always be weak. This sickness is here to stay. That's a dangerous enemy lie. You're needed here so you can't leave. I smell some abusive manipulation. How about this one? You're not needed here, so you must not be valuable. Uh, see how the pendulum swings? God doesn't care, so why should you? Sowing and reaping doesn't work, does it? Another deceitful enemy lie. See, this is just a short list of popular enemy lines that have been laid down in the soul of millions of people over thousands of years. No matter how false they are, if you allow them in your mind repeating them, then you license a defeated devil to have mastery over your life. Joseph Stalin, he permitted these lines in his head. He lacked biblical truth to counter the enemy lines. So he surrendered his mind to a devil who used him to kill millions upon millions of people. The consequences for not breaking enemy lines is severe. Not just for you, but for those God has assigned you to help. Yes, God wants to empower you for his great plans. So how do you counter these fraudulent lines? How do you go about breaking enemy lines? It all starts with the truth, God's truth. This is not a battle to be fought with natural weapons. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French emperor and the great military strategist and commander, he said there are only two forces in the world, the sword and the spirit. In the long run, the sword will always be conquered by the spirit. Look, even one of history's great military minds understood spirit over the physical. Here's how the Bible sums up instruction for us in this supernatural fight. Ephesians 6, verses 11 through 13. Put on God's whole armor that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground. Look at what he said. Stand your ground. You've got ground, my friend. Don't let go of your ground. Don't you miss this truth. What's in this Bible truth for you? The biblical lines to take and hold your ground. You likely own spiritual land that you've never even possessed yet and don't even realize it's yours. Ignorance keeps us all out of fields of blessing, streams of healing, mountains of mercy, and valleys of golden supply. The truth, this truth, breaks through spiritual ignorance and all enemy lines. Gaining intel is a must-have to your breakthrough. Ignorance is a strategy for failure. Look at Proverbs 20, verse 18. Purpose and plans are established by counsel, and only with good advice make or carry on war. This matters to your success, my friend. Life is a spiritual fight, 
the good fight of faith. If you don't have good intel, wise counsel, you can pray, sacrifice, endure all for nothing. Many people spend their life without wisdom on an exercise in futility. James 1 says, double-minded people receive nothing from the Lord. Ouch! No matter how kind you are or how strong you are, you need intel. You need counsel and not just any kind. You need the right kind, the God kind. Have you ever felt like you were going just a little bit crazy? What was your intel source at that time? Was it kind of crazy, maybe foolish, even unwise? Good intel is essential to breaking enemy lines. I saw this cartoon of an older woman strolling in the park and it had this caption, the squirrels must be gathering nuts. Three of my neighbors have disappeared. <laughs> maybe her friends had a bad case of bad intel, right? There's an amazing spy story in the book of Numbers. It's really a story of evil intel that fortifies enemy lines. I want you to hear this. God instructed Israel to spy out a land he promised them, Canaan. So Moses sends 12 spies, giving them orders to be analytical, not subjective. In other words, he wants intel that they can use to strategize the breakthrough of enemy lines. God promised the people this land. Moses wants information like how many people? Are they weak or strong? Do they live in tents or strongholds? Is there timber to build infrastructure? He's like, just keep it simple. I just want the facts, guys. Moses doesn't ask for feelings. He doesn't ask for fear, their opinion, an editorial. He doesn't want a copy of the Jericho Times. He's not asking if they can have the land. No, God's already given it to them. He just wants Intel, plain and simple. Numbers 13, verse 2. Send men to explore and scout out for yourselves the land of Canaan, which I give to the Israelites. Right? Plain and simple. God says, check out the land I give you. So what happened? Numbers 13, starting at verse 25. And they returned from scouting out the land after 40 days. They came to Moses and Aaron and to all the Israelite congregation in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought them word and showed them the land's fruit. Well, that sounds good. Verse 27, they told Moses, we came to the land which you sent us. Surely it flows with milk and honey. This is its fruit. Well, that's what God said. And so far, it's all looking good. They're confirming God's promises. But then verse 28, but... The people who dwell there are strong, the spy said, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, there we saw the sons of Anak of great stature and courage. The report goes all kinds of wrong on verse 28. Double-mindedness kicks in. The moment they talk about the enemy, they editorialize saying, but the people who dwell there are strong. Did they have a UFC match? No. It said they saw the sons of Anak and they were of great stature and courage. How did they know that they had great courage? They didn't know. Now, two of the spies didn't agree with the majority, Caleb and Joshua. So let's read on. Numbers 13, starting at verse 30. Caleb quieted the people before Moses and he said, Let us go up at once and possess it. We are well able to conquer it. You see, Caleb was launching faith, but he was partnered to a bunch of fools. But his fellow scouts said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are stronger than we are. You see, they were self-focused, not God-focused. No mention of God there. So they brought the Israelites an evil report of the land, which they had scouted out, saying, the land through which we went to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the Nephilim, or giants, the sons of Anak, who come from the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Oh, 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 my goodness. Truth is rarely confirmed by the majority. Many times in life, when you need to break enemy lines, the majority around you will suffer from the paralysis of analysis, some stinking thinking. Land is proportioned out by lines. These spies brought an evil report of stinking thinking, an evil report of the lines. Either you believe the truth 
breaking enemy lines, or you will be consumed by his lies. Ten spies spread evil with their report. The people ate grasshopper lies and lost their land, their heritage, God's promise. Did you know that flies lay their eggs close to the grasshopper eggs? Then the flies hatch and eat the grasshopper's eggs. And some flies lay eggs on the grasshopper's bodies. So afterwards, the larvae consume the grasshopper alive. Talk about living dead. Oh my goodness. Remember, Jesus called the devil Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. That wasn't an accident. The 10 spies saw themselves as grasshoppers. That's fly food. And we all know what fly food turns into. That's right. These spies bought into fly poop religion or theology. Then they sold it to others. God calls it an evil report. Fly poop religion keeps you out of the promised land, never breaking through enemies' lines, stuck in addiction, trapped in sickness, enslaved in poverty, captive to ugly shame. It's all lies, FPR lies. Anytime you hear ideology that diminishes your value, magnifies the power of the enemy, distracts from the good news of the gospel, my friend, it's fly poop religion. It's a fly poop report. It's FPR. It's dangerous. Don't receive it. Don't believe it. Don't tolerate fly ideology in your thinking. Terminate it with extreme prejudice with God's truth. Now, now is time to be breaking enemy lines, taking the promised land that God has given you. Every legal right to possess the land of your soul is from God. It's time to eradicate all this enslaving program downloaded through lies, deceit, coercion, FPR. Jesus resisted the devil by declaring, it is written. In the wilderness, he refuted the devil by saying, it is written. If you refuse to break the enemy's lines within, you will live without. One of the most requested prayers is for healing. Almost equal to that request is a prayer for help with finances. These are so important. The problem is many don't understand until enemy lines are defeated in the arena of your mind, no matter how many times God heals your body, it will continue to go back to the programming of your soul, getting sick again. It's the same with God's providing for your needs. If the enemy has access to your soul, your pants pocket will still have a financial hole. The invisible determines the visible. Have you seen that? Have you seen that in your life? In nature, we know that an elephant that weighs about 300 pounds at birth, grows to over 10,000 pounds at maturity, comes from an invisible seed. The invisible determines the visible. And yet this fundamental principle is lost to so many people regarding their own life. They buy into this ideology of life being somehow random. Even though an invisible elephant seed produces a 14,000 pound bull elephant, the 14,000 pound situation in their life is just from some random circumstance? Really? You really want to buy into that kind of FPR? Proverbs 26 verse 2 says this, The curse without cause does not come and alight. An old fellow once said, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know he didn't get there by himself. <laughs> I like that. The curse is real. And if you believe lies over God's word, you can wish, pray, beg, desire, hope for the promised land for the next thousand years and still end up at the mercy of the enemy. But... But if you choose to believe God's truth, you will be breaking enemy lines. You kick the FPR out of your mental DVR. Praise God. Now you can go far, rock star. Isn't this exciting? It sure is. The next session, I'm going to give you five steps to breaking enemy lines. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's going to work for you. The only variable is this. If, if you believe on the Lord Jesus, it's not about how good you are, you see. It's about how good he is, how perfect he is. You might be saying, Stephen, I, 
I need to get free right now. Like, I need to break some enemy lines in my life today, right now. Well, I'm so glad that you realize that. You can invite the Savior into your life right now. Jesus has perfectly defeated death, hell, and the grave. The devil, with his love, his blood, and his suffering at the cross. He did that for you, for you and for me. He died in our place, and three days later, God raised him up from the grave. Amazing, truly amazing. Jesus is the eternal victor and the devil is defeated. And still with all of that, Jesus will never ever force his way into your life. You've got to ask him to save you. You've got to invite him into your heart. He has pleasant lines of blessing for you, but he'll never force his way onto you. You have to choose him as your Lord and Savior. That's true love and it's your choice. Let me lead you in a prayer to authorize God's power over your soul. Dear Lord Jesus, just say that out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I submit my whole life to your finished work on the cross. I use my faith to make this declaration. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Jesus, you love me and gave yourself up for me. I receive your grace to walk and live in your righteousness. I have your authority to say, it is written. That's breaking enemy lines, God, with your word. I take back my life and give it to you, Lord. I cast down all the lies that I've believed. I submit false borders in my mind to your breakthrough power. My heart, my soul, my mind are dedicated to you, Lord. Live in me. Let your victory now reign in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.